Okay, we already got some people in. Hello, hi, um, happy Saturday. Um, Corrupto Stylist here with Valiant Brand. Really, really excited to stream with him today. We have a lot to talk about. We already got kind of a head start in the green room. Um, but there's a few people already here. Rags to Riches is here. I'm so <laughs> hello. Uh, I've streamed with him a few times. Um, we always have a lot of fun. Finn Bear is here. He says hi to you. Um, and he says that he says that I'm a very intelligent lady. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a really nice compliment. Um, so um, it's funny because I always meet people in the green room, you know, like 15, sometimes even half an hour before. And I feel like we really should start recording in the green room because I feel like it's almost the better conversation because we're so relaxed and, and it's like completely unfiltered. And I feel like it, the, the stream starts and it becomes a little bit, you know, less free. But it's really good. I'm going to start secretly recording the green room talk and then <laughs> make a whole stream on it because it's very, very good. <laughs> well, no, it's interesting that you say that because um, actually for one of the first, uh, actually the very first uh, online conference that Maddie and Joe Hexotic did, uh, Joe Hexotic had like a separate green room. And yeah, I mean, I think they had told everyone, but yeah, yeah. they were recording that whole time. And then yeah. lo and behold, uh, they, you know, you have like the, it was like a, a fast forwarded video with a whole bunch of clips oh. of kinetics oh. literally yeah. like 10 minutes before he's like oh i need a green screen or whatever it was and yeah. he's you know jimmy rigging uh, a green screen and it looks great at the very end but um you're totally right that a lot of the the great conversations happened there and anyways yeah i know i'm uh honored to be here as well i saw the the rags to riches uh comment and you know the little the little flex <laughs> thing and i saw i saw his streams with you and and i really like them as well and you know, it's cool. Uh, Finn Bear says, you know, you're a very intelligent lady. And and it's true, you know, not only do hexagons have, you know, a whole bunch of knowledge, but mm. we, uh, you know, we kind of corral together and, you know, educate each other in, uh, in different ways that we might not have known before. Mm. Mm. It is it is true. It, it, I like that there's such a diversity of backgrounds and of professions and even just age and it's uh it's a really and then we all come together we have this common thread that we're so into um you know crypto and and hex and pulse and pulse chain so um crypto pandas here hi crypto panda good to see yeah. you too um so it was um i wanted to start by highlighting the video that you, that was a really short clip that you did you didn't even mm. speak or anything brandon it was really powerful with four attendees and then he showed mm. his face and he talked about his story about how people told him he would never be wealthy. And if he wanted to be wealthy, he should have been a doctor and not been a nurse and just kind of all the kind of FUD that he had from people. Mm. I don't know if they were close to him or who would say such a thing to him. And, you know, it just was really inspiring because it really just made him work harder and try harder. And then, you know, I mean, look at him now. He's thinking, <laughs> they think he's gonna be okay, you know, and they're um, probably better off than all the people who doubted him. And I just really, it just really, Sometimes, especially like when price is down and Pulse Chain hasn't mm -hmm. launched yet, there are people around me who think that I'm crazy. They think like, what are you doing? Why are you so into this? What have you gotten out of it? Because I got in a time when it was actually really had gone up a lot. Hex. Sure. Yeah. And so, you know, it's actually down from when I started, but I know that it's mm. going to go back up because I've seen the whole historical chart and I've seen all the Bitcoin, all the charts for like all the major cryptocurrencies and it will bounce back. But it's, you know, the Pulse and Pulse, the Pulse chain launch mm. being late. There's just so much like doubt and people around me who like just are so scared mm -hmm. for me. And, you know, it's just it's I don't know if you experienced that when mm. you when you first got into yeah. Hex. Well, totally. And, uh, you know, the thing that I'll say for people that are ever scared in, in anything in life is that, you know, it's kind of like how I used to feel when, when I would present uh, in school uh, as a kid. Mm -hmm. I'd always be super nervous because I wasn't really prepared. But when you mm -hmm. know what you're investing in and you know what the product is doing, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's all just a smart contract and it's all, you know, code, lines of code. And they say like code is law and things like this. But when you mentioned the uh, the Tendies story, yeah, I thought that that was, you know, Wendy's for Tendies, I thought that that was a very uh, powerful story because it just goes to show you, and I've always thought this in life, but like, you know, it's it's super easy, you know, anyone can, can think of like th the bad in something or the negative in something, but, you know, can you actually see the, the forest through the trees or can you see, uh, you know, the benefits of something and why that might be positive instead of, like you mentioned, listening to all the doubt because, 
I promise you as well, same thing with attendees. And I bet a lot of us could probably feel the same way that if we actually listened to those that, that loved us, that doubted us, things like that, then we wouldn't be where we are today or we wouldn't have had the successes that we might have already had if we had listened to those people, you know? And so there's so much fallacies in life that are like, you know, people think that you need to go a certain direction or that you need to do a certain thing to be successful. And then you look at what they're doing that's kind of like that path and they're not successful. So it's like, who are they to say what someone that's successful should be doing? You know, they should be, you know, quieting down and, and taking notes in my opinion. It's such the middle class mentality. You know, I actually, I, I don't think I've ever said this on stream, but I I went to law school. I actually practiced nice. for a little bit. I, I was nice, a terrible nice. lawyer. So <laughs> I was a terrible lawyer. So I was like, you know what? Before I get sued, <laughs> I better quit because <laughs> I'm going to figure out that I really have no idea what the F I'm doing. And like, I really, not, every day I practice law is malpractice. Yep, <laughs> so, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, but anyway, all my friends, like went to the corporate life, you know, on partnership track with their third home. And I'm like, meanwhile, I like started my own fashion business, which was so hard. I mean, in a ways it was really rewarding, but in other ways it was like a lot of struggle. They're like on their mm. third house while I'm like, you know, barely just trying to get by. So I really, that story really spoke to me, Tendi's story, because, you know, people around me were just like, well, you should have been a lawyer. You should have stuck to that. And then you'd be fine. But you're just trying to do fashion, like fashion's not, mm. you know, that's not profitable. That's not, you know, it's not, um, it, it's not nearly as prestigious as being a lawyer. You would have a lot more money and a lot more, a much better life. And, you know, it's not true because I actually really like what I do, you know, and I mm -hmm. and managed to, you know, work up the corporate ladder where I am now. So it's like, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just like society. I guess we're just programmed to think that we have to go and tick all these boxes along the way and you have to go on this certain path. And if you deviate from that path, then you're a loser. And it's like, mm. I've never, ever fit into that mold. I've always hung out with people yeah. who are kind of on the periphery, you know, kind of on the outside, yeah, not, yeah. not all the people on the, in the center, you know? So mm. I don't know. I feel like you're kind of that way too, Brandon. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think a lot of us kind of share that in common and like, Richard said in the highest of stakes, uh, what do they call it? Like a sizzle reel, I think. But he had said, you know, all of those people that thought, you know, you and me were like crazy loon birds mm. and stuff like that, mm. you know, in the future, they're going to be the the ones owning, you know, half the assets in the world or, you know, mm. things like that. And, and so many people, um, you know, what it really comes down to is, and I listened to your, your stream with whales only and, and racks to riches before mm. this, um, things like that. But Wales only talked about, and I've always agreed with this, is that the best thing that you can do in life is, is fail as fast as possible, you know, yeah. fall on your face as many times as possible. Because yeah. then you, you know, like you mentioned with, uh, you know, law school and, and the lawyer thing, you know, it's awesome that, you know, you know that you're able to do that. But then you also realize very quickly that, hey, you know, this, this isn't my right path. You know, I should mm. go on this other path. Um, mm. And so it's nice to know that because at the end of the day, you know, no one is going to make those choices for you. You have to make them for yourself, no matter how much someone might, you know, influence you in your life. Um, so mm -hmm. it's just really important to really like uh, hone that, I guess, and, you know, take control of that. No, absolutely. That's, that's very, very, very true. Um, when you're original, you got in day one, right? You're day one OG yeah. hexagon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, uh, so I got into crypto. Well, I got into like investing in like 2016, 2017 when I was working at like CenturyLink in downtown Bellevue, Washington. The uh, one of the coworkers, so I had two older coworkers, and one of them had owned a jewelry store and a like a precious metal store in the past. And uh, so, anyways, he had kind of always in like because there was you know there's two televisions in there because it was like a display room, and he had always had like the investing channels on and. And so I had seen Bitcoin mentioned, you know, a handful of times mm. on those investing channels. And mm. it's the same thing with precious metals. I got into that in 2016, early 2017. Mm -hmm. And then and then I don't know where I had first heard it. It might have been Reddit.com because I used to, you know, go on Reddit a whole bunch. But mm. I'd always heard like, oh, Bitcoin is the digital gold and, you know, so-and-so is the digital silver. So long story short, I had I'd then heard about uh, Richard Hart because so many people were, were craft talking him. And the thing that I've learned in life as a contrarian, I consider myself like if, if, and this is how I see this with my brothers or with anyone else, if someone's going this way, like the majority of the crowd's going this way, I'm going to be the guy over here, you know? Yeah. And I think you kind of mentioned that as well, 
Um, and you know, it pays off to, to do those things, not to just go where everyone else is going. Yeah. But the point is, is long story short, I had found Richard about March 15th, 2017. And, uh, you know, that guy is a damn wealth of knowledge. And, <laughs> you know, you can tell, you can tell from the get go, like, you know, he chose Hart for, for, uh, for a reason, right. You know, obviously mm -hmm. Schuler is, is his last name, mm -hmm. but you know, he was able to, the thing that I've always learned is like, no matter what someone says about you or me or, or uh, Richard Hart, what are the actions of that person? You know, and so the actions of Richard Hart, the first videos I had seen of him, I'd heard he was a, I'd heard he was a Bitcoin maxi, but the first videos mm. I had seen were all self help, and it's like mm. this guy doesn't seem like the devil that everyone portrays mm. him to be. You mm -hmm. know, what was the issue at that time? Because that's before Hex came out. What was controversial? What were <laughs> just Richard in general, you know, people don't like spicy takes and they don't like people that speak truth to power. And when someone like Richard, uh, you know, he, he was, he was a lot more open with his language, uh, you know, earlier in the years and stuff, he kind of <laughs> dialed it back, but, uh, you know, he was going after, you know, he was going after the big heads and stuff, uh, in the, in the community itself. And, oh, this guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. It's actually this thing. And the Bitcoin community had like a pretty big, um, mm. When Bitcoin had split up to Bitcoin Cash and the, the mm. Segwit 2x stuff like that, um, you know, it kind of divided the community into this camp and that camp. And anyway, so people people never liked Richard because you know he's uh, not braggadocious, but like he, uh, he you know he's successful. He's a uh, he's he calls himself like a serial winner, you know. And mm. uh, you know people people don't like that. Whether it's in mm. any industry, people don't like to see someone that's young and that's successful and that. You know what it comes down to is it's really like jealousy and they wish that they could probably be there too but they never mm -hmm. took those risks and those actions to actually get there where that person actually did mm. okay that yeah no no okay I, I understand actually i totally get it so i get it now um you know one of the first videos i saw brandon of, of hex like one of the first youtube videos that i saw was where you announced your retirement <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's can he drive? Like what? How old is he? He's retired. I'm getting to start anything yet. Like what? I was like, this is crazy. I need to get me some of that. I need some of that. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it, it's remember. true, you know. <laughs> no, that's that's awesome. And like, you know, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit in the green room, mm. but yeah, I never planned to dox my name being ever in crypto or dox my mm. face, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But when when I had seen, because I, because, you know, you asked, oh, you know, did you get in day one? And yes, I did mm. and stuff. And yeah. I'd been following Richard and stuff, but I didn't realize there's a huge freaking community of people just like me that, that you know, love what Richard's doing, that, uh, you know, believe in the same values, uh, truth mm -hmm. to power, things like that. And so when I had seen Discourse Syndicate, it was, you know, first it was like, Hexologist, and I'm like, man, this guy's funny. Like, this guy is, you know, he's constantly smiling and laughing, and he's got a good sense of humor. This guy seems uh -huh. like someone I'd want to hang out with. And then, uh -huh. same thing with RG3. It was like, oh, cool. Like, there's a community of people here that are already uh -huh. doing what I was afraid of, which was, you know, uh -huh. showing my face and speaking my uh -huh. opinions. And so, I think it's really uh, powerful. You know, uh -huh. you mentioned in your in your Nike thing, like the 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 one person that kind of changes like the industry, whether it was Jordan with the shoes. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have that in, in other things like with, I feel like Hex is kind of that way to the crypto community because Bitcoin has been around for, I don't even know, like, like over 12 years now, something like that. So we're really making some serious changes and some serious waves. Bitcoin is maybe like Adidas. <laughs> and Hex yeah, is like yeah. <laughs> yeah because it's, it's so number true. one well, yeah. well it's yeah, true but it wasn't like, for a while uh, yeah. it was always number three and then it after michael jordan it like it it popped and that's when it that's mm. what it's the tipping point for the brand so because that was such a big 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 campaign but yeah i mean hmm did um so what full time you are um you do a lot you stream a lot so you make a lot of content so i guess i feel like you do a lot just to really support the community you're you attend a lot of streams you're incredibly um generous with your comments and your time and always like giving you know super what do you call it when you donate money to the chats yeah, and super yeah no it's just you're you're like a very um, you flow a lot of power to a lot of people you always mm. encourage new people um like me you've been so nice to me and so I think that, you know, you're really um, 
you're a real asset and I, I admire you because you're so young and you have so much and you could just be like buying a different Lamborghini every other day or like running around on yachts with like models and yeah. you know, that's a great yeah, life, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, see, for me, I've never been that kind of guy that was like oh. material or possession and stuff. I always knew like I had a lot more than just that to offer. And I always just thought that stuff was kind of like, you know, let someone else do it, you know, that actually can kind of fit that mold and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of leading by example. I mean, if you yeah. look at what, I mean, Richard talks about this too. A lot of people don't know this. I mean, Richard's been in Bitcoin since 2011 and things like that oh. since early 2011. But uh, he had had, so just like I have Brian Jones and, and Steve Johnston, one of them was my neighbor, one of them was my coworker. Richard had, and he'll never say his aliases, but he had, you know, a couple or, you know, whatever uh, alt, alt alternative accounts that he would browse on uh you know subreddits and things like that and so the point is is you know richard led by example by showing himself out there and and saying mm -hmm. like hey if no one else is going to do it i'm going to do it and i just mm -hmm. think that um you know we talk about like community and things like that i'm a i'm a firm believer that you are only as strong as your weakest link and so yeah. if that weakest link is you know on their knees or they're falling or whatever, like help that person up, help that person get up because, mm -hmm. you know, if everyone else is already up here and stuff and that weakest link is down here, well, you know, you need to balance those scales and yeah. things like that. Um, so I'm a firm believer in that. And, you know, whatever we can do, you know, once again, it's, it's so easy to be a pessimist and to, you know, see negativity in the world or with certain, you know, with anything, but mm -hmm. to, to be able to see that as just, you know, one frame of thinking and then to flip it and be able to think the other way and see how you can improve it, how you can change it, how you can take whatever circumstances you're dealt with and then, you know, make the most of it. You know, like with tendies, um, you know, I was making like $17.50, like $18 at most at my job. And, you know, obviously I had certain bills and stuff and, and a girlfriend, you know, hanging out with her and stuff, but, you know, conserving every, you know, every, uh, you know, paycheck that I could into dollar cost averaging for Hex or, you know, it was Ethereum actually what I was dollar cost averaging into and then using that for the adoption amplifier. But the point is, is that literally anyone can, anyone can make it, you know, and so many people, they do listen to those that doubt them. And they do listen to those that, you know, don't want them to succeed and they want them to be held back. And uh, it's a shame because, you know, what what would the potential of those people be if they didn't listen to the, the negativity and the doubt and they said, F you, I'm going to do it anyways. And, you know, I'm going to find my own path, you know? Yes. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's... um. It's the harder path to take, though, Brandon. To it's easy yeah. just to say, Ugh, you know, like they don't get it. There's a loser, or you know, that's just to like give up on people. It's harder to mm. really, you know, try to help them and 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 bring them and lift them back up. So I, I really mm. do admire that. Um, mm. You know, we were talking in the green room also about. We talked about a lot in the green room. <laughs> we're all in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, talked yeah. about, um, we talked about the Gemini letter. And, oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you okay? Do you want to do you want to tell everybody what the Gemini letter is about? If, if <laughs> sure, we don't sure. Know? So so um yeah, you know, the owners of Gemini is Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss mm -hmm. and uh the Winklevi twins and whatnot. And um so so yeah, I had first heard about it and then I had, you know, you'd ask, like, have you seen the letter? And and I had seen it for like a couple of seconds, but but uh yeah, I believe I believe it literally slant it because funding Jim said it opened up for you know a lawsuit, um, mm -hmm. you know liability and whatnot. But but anyways, the letter had gone to I think all Gemini users saying like hex is a scam, something like that. And and it's mm -hmm. like man, haven't we heard that you know two two plus years ago in like tone vase and you know three lawyers tried to get Richard to, you know, say that he was an OA or whatever kind of thing into being a security and. You know, it's just interesting. It's interesting timing to uh, to see that letter of you know fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And you know, the interesting thing about it is, uh, it's kind of like uh, like a, a certain president back in the day, where it's like no press is bad press. You know, even the bad press. Like how the hell? How the heck do you think I found Richard Hart? It wasn't from you know someone you know glorifying him. It was from someone craft talking him. And I said, yeah. you know. Any time in life that I've heard someone talk negatively about someone else without them being there to defend themselves, I've always thought, well, like, 
that's just one person's opinion. You know, like okay. I'm not just going to blindly trust them. I'm going to verify that for myself and see if that's uh -huh. actually true or not. And like 90% uh -huh. of the time, I've always found out that that person that was craft talking was uh -huh. actually wrong. And like the person that they were, that they were, uh, talking negatively towards they were doing so because they're so darn successful you know so it's just one of those exactly. things of like being a contrarian you know it, it's so true and you know the letter i believe went further brandon to say that if mm. you do hold hex or you want to continue to hold hex you can't work mm. with gemini oh really okay yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't see any of that yeah <laughs> it was, i mean i was like i was shocked i'm like is that even legal like is that it yeah, feels that's, unconstitutional. That's okay. I, I'm like, that is, yeah. that's crazy. They're really threatened. They're really threatened. But then I thought, and you brought up the point, I thought about Michael Jordan and the Nike and how the shoes are banned yeah. and they made a whole ad around that. I almost feel like, is this an opportunity to take this controversy controversy and make it like a whole thing around it to make it go viral? Do we talk about it mm. more? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So, well, and that's that's yeah. what always happens, you know. You're you're totally right. Um, you know, there's there's always a certain few that that can think for themselves, and they don't just have oh. to listen listen to the crowd, right? They can actually, yeah. um, you know, hear that information and they they can discern it with logic. And so, yeah, there's going to be a handful of people that get that letter, and they're going to be like, oh, you know, I've heard about this hex thing before. Um, you know what? It, it really is a threat to the establishment. And just like you had mentioned with the Nike and the Jordan and stuff, or or the Ty Tiger Woods, things like that, you know, a threat to the establishment. And then what happened in, in the past, well, you know, they had to kind of buckle and, uh, you know, the other person had kind of won. And so I really see that with things like Hex and with someone like Richard Hart, you know, the, the fearless leader, you know, bring your yeah. heroes here to die. Uh, I absolutely love that. And you know, Richard has a really good skill of, once again, you know, it's so true, these certain sayings and stuff, but like common sense ain't common, you know? Um, yeah. But if you listen to someone like Richard Hart, you just, you know, I told, I told my, I told my oldest brother, I said, Hey, I know you don't like him. I know you think he's douchey, all this stuff, but just close your eyes and listen to what he's saying, you know, because you don't have to look at the person and all this, you know, glamorous, you know, fancy stuff um, that really means nothing. If you just close your eyes and listen to what he's saying, you can hear that what he's saying is truthful, it's facts, and it's it's wisdom and logic. And so I uh -huh. think a lot of people have really uh, come around to that. You know, you look at some of the people that uh, that were, you know, not big fans of Hex in the beginning, and some of them have come around to it, and they realized, oh, you know, Brandon with Rags Riches mentioned it. You know, you come around and you realize, oh, okay, like, you know, this thing is actually legitimate, and this thing actually has a community. Why does it have a community? You know, is it bought and paid for, or is it like organic and grassroots and like a natural adoption? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it might also have something to do with the fact that don't the Winklevoss brothers own 1% of the whole Bitcoin supply? Like, yeah, they, they, they have the best thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, is they're putting their money where their mouth is? Because that's, they hold so much of it that, I mean, it might have something to do with why that they're so threatened by Hex, because that's a really, really ballsy thing to do. They know they're yeah. going to get sued. You think the Hexicons mm -hmm. are going to just sit back and take it? Look what they did to CoinMarketCap. No. Oh, <laughs> it's a belligerent crew of people. <laughs> well, they, they probably they probably didn't free claim because I remember having, you know, I was in I was in the Litecoin at the time mm. and, you know, had a decent amount of Litecoin and stuff. And then when Richard had mentioned, see, Richard, people don't realize this, but people that like consumed all of his content like I did and like, you know, some of it multiple times, he gave you the best tips and tricks. He told you how to self-refer and get a 32% mm -hmm. bonus, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he also said that, hey, you know, if you have Bitcoin, you can free claim it, but, you, you know, you can get like 10,000 hex per Bitcoin, but you need to have it in your possession. And so I'm guessing that the Winklevoss twins didn't claim their hex or, you know, whatever it is, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's yeah. it's good for hex. I mean, Richard said in the interview with uh, whatever the lady's name is from Link Up TV, he had said like, because she's like, you know, kind of like the, uh, what's it called? Like advanced free fee fraud where she's like, oh, you know, you know, you invest in me, invest in you type thing. Um, mm. Richard had said, he's like, doesn't matter. We've already won. You know, and, mm. and I really agree with that kind of terminology because it is true. And it's just mm. a matter of time before everyone comes around and realizes this. Wales only talks about this a lot, but like we really have already won. And so those mm. of us that are in the community, it almost is up to us that, you know, if we feel uh, 
you know, if we feel like it's it's going to benefit us or we feel comfortable in doing so, you know, you're you're on the right side of history in in this oh. case with Hex. And so oh. isn't that a good thing to help your common oh. friend and help your fellow man oh. and woman? Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm like thinking about when I first got into Hex, and actually it was, I got into Pulse Chain, I got into the sacrifice. And one of the videos that I saw was, oh, I forgot his name, but it's some guy that used to be into Hex, but then kind of turned on Hex. And he Maybe did like this whole texture? video. I don't remember his name, but he did okay, this sure, whole sure, video. Sure. He did this whole video on um, the OA sacrifice and how that, because mm -hmm. because this, he sacrificed so much at the very end of the pulse chain sacrifice, that that the market cap would be so high and that like ruined the chance for everybody else, right? Ruined, you know, diluted everybody else and just kind of like screwed everybody who sacrificed, which obviously we know isn't true. But mm. I talk about this because I think you recently did a video talking about the OA and like mm. really going into that because this is something I bring it up also because a lot of people who are, I'm trying to onboard somehow know about this. Like, isn't there mm. like one guy who or one account that <laughs> owns like the entire 99% of the supply? And isn't that really scary? And do you, I really want to be mm. a part of that? And so I wanted you to talk about your um, De Beers. Is it called the De yeah, Beers yeah, analogy? Yeah, yeah. And kind of because yeah. that is actually one of the best explanations I've ever heard to, mm. to the best counter arguments I've ever heard to the, mm. what do you, the one person owns 99% of the supply? Because I get this question a lot. Do, mm. do you mind talking well, about it? Not at all. So, I mean, uh, I don't mind. So to be fair, it was Richard that came up with that analogy and it was on big payday. So, cause on big payday. Um, so, so there was a 351 day launch phase, uh, for hex, you know, the adoption amplifier where you could uh -huh. take Ethereum with the smart contract, turn it into hex anyways, uh, -huh. uh day 351, November 19th. Yeah. The, the OA had, had staked. And literally, if you look at some of these stat websites, it shows like 99.94 or something like that percent staked. And, uh, you know, so so what it really comes down to is it comes down to ignorance because, yeah, you look at the, I mean, you know, uh, inherently like diamonds have no value and stuff like this, but mm -hmm. there's, there's a whole bunch of them, you know, but mm -hmm. what is the supply on the market? And mm -hmm. it's similar with Hex where like, you know, do you see the De Beers even all these years later, like they, they owned a mass amount of the diamond coffers and, and the mines and all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, some people, they, they, it's, a, it's what Richard calls like a parade of imaginary horribles mm -hmm. where they have mm -hmm. this fallacy in their mind. And it's almost like an insecurity projection where like they feel that if they were in that position, they might be the one to rug pull or they might do something nefarious because they, they almost have this thought in their mind, like how could someone who is successful or how could someone ever have this much power and have good intention, you know, because yeah. so many times in the past they've seen it oh. go wrong. And oh. so what you see is someone like Richard and, you know, if, if, if people, if people want to, you know, let's just hypothetically speculate, you know, if Richard is the OA, he's mentioned this before as a hypothetical, mm -hmm. obviously, but if he is the OA, well, you know, during the adoption amplifier of the, uh, you know, the hex initial launch phase, you know, the the OA mm -hmm. or whatever that entity got like a million Ethereum. That's a mm -hmm. ton. That's a freaking mm -hmm. ton. You mm -hmm. know, so so for these people in in some of the people that I know had these fallacies and they literally sold it twenty percent of a penny on big payday. The big wick down sold. You know, and they just believed in all this fear and this fud. And I told him, I said, hey, dude, if you just stake for this one day, you're going to get 30% more. But the point is, is that, you know, uh, so, so many people, uh, you know, they, they've got opportunity staring at them in the face. And even the Hex.com website in the very beginning, a lot of these Bitcoiners would say, oh, you know, look at this. It looks like a pyramid scheme. It looks like a scam, you know, referral mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. and what it comes down to is like, you know, uh, sometimes there really is that differentiation in the market that, it is different this time. You know, I tried to tell that to someone. I said, you know, I know you think this and think that and stuff, but but it really is different this time. And so, you know, you have these people that move the goalpost. You know, they, uh, you know, Tone Vase on day one said, okay, you know, Richard Hart, he's he's going to rug pull. You know, look at all this, you know, hypothetically, look at all this Ethereum he's got. And then, and then it was big payday. So November 19th, oh yeah, that's the rug pull. That's the rug pull. Everyone get out, sell, you know, 20% of a penny. It's going down to zero. And then, you know, a year later, you know, so they constantly move the goalpost and, and then it's like, you know, 
by the time that they actually do capitulate, which is like all ego for them, they don't want to admit that they're wrong. Even though a lot of these people privately have invested in Hex. And think about how immoral and unethical this is. They they tell their followers that Hex is a scam, you know, send out letters and stuff, but privately they've already invested. Like how disgusting is that, in my opinion? That's that's some pretty unethical um, you know, people. Yeah, I yeah. If I start to get on this subject, then I'll start to talk about influencers who like shill sure, sure. No <laughs> and worries. then like dump, and then I get really upset because I just think mm. that's so disgusting. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's really, really horrible, horrible, horrible mm. behavior. Um, but yeah, so so just like the point that you mentioned, so you say like, how, how do I dispel this FUD? You know, mm. how do I dispel to these people that say Richard's going to dump it all? And like, you can't, you know, all you can do, you know, you, I mean, yeah, you know, hypothetically, if that is the case, you know, there's, there's nothing stopping X person or X entity or, you know, group of entities from doing so. But literally every single day that that doesn't happen and every single day that you see the, the OA origin address being, you know, a benevolent well, you know, Richard has always said like the, the best thing for a country is a benevolent dictator, you know. Uh, which mm -hmm. is kind of what that is, De Beers, you know, uh, you know, you look at any other successful company, Amazon, Facebook, all this mm -hmm. stuff has very centralized ownership. And so we kind of just have to dispel some of that FUD with like, hey, what has it done in the past? What is it doing currently? And like, you know, if Richard was ever going to rug pull, you think that guy would show his face? You know, you think he would say that he's in Europe? You think that he would do all this stuff? No. So like, when is it going to be different this time for those people? And honestly, you know, for some of your friends or some of these things that kind of have the sphere and stuff, some of those people, I promise, will never get on board and they'll constantly always be jealous and hateful and stuff. True. And, you know, some people just weren't meant to be successful because whatever reasons. Mm. No, that's true. That's true. Well, I mean, over the weekend, I mean, the price is, I feel like it's, I feel it. I feel like it's happening. It's pumping. Wait, what did somebody say? <laughs> they called it the, uh, <laughs> a crypto panda called it the crypto ballot at hex pump. <laughs> 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 yeah it's it's because of the stream all 10 people <laughs> i appreciate i appreciate everyone who's here but yeah i'm not i'm not quite there yet <laughs> no no and, and and that's the thing like you know uh i mean heck you look at people like k4k that guy has freaking blown up overnight uh you know, people, uh, you know, uh, mm. you know, just certain people in the community. And, and it's mm. not like, you know, one person's better than the other person. It's never like that. You know, the, the beautiful thing about abundance is like, it's abundant, you know, like yeah. plentiful, you know? And so, yeah, everyone subscribe to this if you haven't already. And, and same thing, you know, it's like a, it's a win-win situation. My dad, he, my dad and mom did real estate for 25 years together. Mm. And he had always taught me like, you know, there's certain things that you just don't forget as a kid. Um, but mm. he had always said, because, you know, he got screwed over several times at like mm. a, a business or with service. And he had always mm. said, like, you know, business is like a, a two way street. You know, it's supposed mm. to like benefit this person, benefit that person like an ex, not, mm. you know, just benefit me and screw you over. Because if that mm -hmm. happens, this person, mm -hmm. you know, not only did you do them wrong, but not only did you do them wrong, are they never going to do business with you? But then they're going to tell every person about you that you screwed them over. And so the point mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, Hex really is a a win-win. You know, some people think, Peter Schiff said this in the interview with Richard, uh, or the debate uh, with Richard, that like for someone to win, someone else needs to lose. And like, that's not true. You know, it's just not true at all. But yeah, you look at this, this Hex price mm -hmm. and, you know, it does feel like that we have bottomed. And like, you know, you look at, so what is it? Uh, Uniswap V2. So yeah. And I was telling my dad the other day, I was like, hey, I think like 10 cents is around the bottom. You know, you mm -hmm. see maximum... Mm. capitulation you see maximum yeah. fud maximum infighting mm. uh, but the point is is you know like you mentioned you know you'd mentioned and crypto 7 has mentioned this too maybe getting in you know towards the the more recent top of the, the you know the mm. most recent market cycle and things like that but if you you know richard posted it he had said like hey i'm the founder of xyz blah 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 and then he shows a picture of the chart and this is what i always try and tell people but you know zoom out on the chart look at what it's done yeah. in the past yeah and if you exactly. like he, he, he showed a picture of the monthly you know so people they're freaking looking at the the one minute the five minute the 15 oh, you know all this stuff that's like a crackhead you know and yeah. it's like no nah, dude zoom out be the sloth you know be the, the tortoise versus the hare you know be that <laughs> sloth sitting on the tree that's just earning a whole bunch of you know daily passive yield every single day um so it's cool that the cycle 
you know, because actual scams, yeah, they, you know, they pump the, uh, so this way, so they pump and then they dump, you know, yeah. um, but then actual bit, you know, look at, look at Amazon, right? The people, I know people, cause I live in Seattle. Uh, I know people that had the opportunity to invest in Amazon. Uh, what's the other one? Microsoft, right? They had the opportunity to freaking invest in IPO or super early and they didn't because they got fudded out of the market and that's traditional mm -hmm. market. Um, uh -huh. let alone crypto. So, you know, uh -huh. there's always going to be those people that are naysayers. You know, you even have it yeah. today with, with like the Tesla company. They're like, uh -huh. oh, there's no way it can keep going up and it keeps going uh -huh. up, you know? Uh -huh. uh, some of these things that just really defy uh, other people's reality. Yeah, I mean, what I always say is that, you know, for every major dip that Hex has, it comes back with a new all-time high. So the dips to me aren't scary. It's just part of the, it's just part of the, phys it's kind of like just how it, it the volatility just goes, it pumps so hard that it just has to like recalibrate. And that's what happens. And sometimes it's a little bit extreme, but that pump that happened when I first got in, I got in at 17 cents and it just, just went straight up to the 55. I've never, yeah, it was true. crazy. I was like, so FOMOing. <laughs> I was like, just trying to do everything I could to get my hands on it as much hex as I could. Cause I was afraid it was good. And people were saying, it's going to go to $10. It's going to go to, you know, and yeah, it yeah. was, it was really flying. And then it's good to experience this kind of dip. And then mm. a lot of sideways movement just to understand that that's what happens after something that it was really, really, really intense. That whole, yeah. that, that yep. run, you know, euphoria. It's like it a really drug. Was. Yeah, it's like it the was. hardest drug like, that you've like ever taken. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and yeah. I was like, okay, well, now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and it's true. It really is, you know. Um, and, and that's where you know traders really get it. And you know, uh someone yeah. someone the other day was like, uh, and it's kind of kind of like a you know, I wasn't giving them the answer that they were looking for, but they were like, I did really good with blackjack, you know, what should I invest in hacks, pulse? And I and I just sent them the, the trading thing of Richard saying, like, hey, stop trading. And uh you know, obviously that wasn't the answer that the guy was looking for. But the point is, is that, uh, yeah, you know, you get, you know, every market itself has cycles. And and my parents right. know this. Gary knows this. Uh, Funding right. Jim. Uh, whether right. it's like real estate, right? You know, yeah. you've seen yeah. uh, uh, like market bubbles and then crashes and stuff. Yeah. But then same thing with Amazon and things like that. And, and you're right. It is healthy for, you know, mm -hmm. nothing you know, uh, what goes up must come down, things like that. Nothing can ever mm -hmm. just go up mm -hmm. uh, permanently. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's important to have that cycle because, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a famous video of, uh, I think it's the founder of Wise, and you look at their mm -hmm. chart and it's just death, absolutely <laughs> death, you know. Um, but you look at the founder of Wise, I think his name was like Knightley or whatever it was. But so there's there's a whole bunch of clips. Someone can find it on, on Twitter. But the guy had unstaked, emergency unstaked, like half a billion hex, you know, it was like a 500 million. And he got like, I forget, like 100 million, whatever. But oh. the point is, is, you know, so now that that guy emergency unstaked and he dumped and he did it on camera, which is just hilarious. He'll forever be oh. a meme. Um, but he can't sell, you know, he sold then, he can't sell now. You know, he can't murder oh. the price now. You know, so there's a whole bunch of people that, you know, it doesn't matter how much, you know, Richard talks about this, yeah. you know, mm. big freaking whoop that Richard mined 50 Bitcoin blocks, you know, three times a day. That doesn't matter. Mm. That's, that's, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's arbitrary, right? What matters mm. is did Richard hold on to it until today or until mad gains? He knows that. Mm. And so mm. it doesn't matter. You know, you see that all the time, people that are like, oh, you know, I had this and then, and then like, you can just tell that they never, uh, held on to it through its maximum opportunity. Mm. So mm. it is important to have that market cycle. It shakes out those that that were uncertain, that were just there for like hype or, uh, you know, kind of like mad gains and stuff. And then the second that it goes down, they lose all faith. Well, that shows that once again, they had faith instead of actual knowledge. You know, if you know what you're investing in and you're holding with something like Hex and you've seen it do so many market cycles, then you don't have to have faith in it. You can just actually have like knowledge and know that it is a cyclical cycle. Oh yeah, absolutely. And to your point about zooming out, that's so important. So I always talk about Gerardo's chart with Hex, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you look at where Hex is right now on the chart, it's Bitcoin at $6. God, I wish I could have gotten to Bitcoin at six dollars. So even now, it's not late. It's Bitcoin at six dollars. So I mean, that's a really, really good investment. And there's a long way to go. We're only two years in. We're very young. You know, Ethereum's it's, what, like it's so true. Yeah, it's seven years old, and Bitcoin's fourteen years old, or thirteen or fourteen years old. I was so gonna we're only two. 
Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say if if you want, I I had it on just the share screen just for like that reference, and we, oh, we don't yeah, have yeah, to. But do but just for other, all you have to do is just click like add to screen, and okay. then and then I can stop the share screen once we're done here. But yeah, yeah you know, this is looking to hacks.com. Shout out to Gerardo, and uh, you know, yeah, return on investment from launch. You know, you look at so so this is Bitcoin. Bitcoin did uh, six point nine oh. million x from a penny. You know, Ethereum. You can see. Uh, you know, kind of itch trajectory from mm -hmm. from Bitcoin. It's a little, you know, it's a little bit steeper. But then you look mm -hmm. at Hex, and it's like, man, you know, Bitcoin is is the grandpa. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hex, or sorry, uh, Ethereum is like the dad, and then and then Hex is like, you know, the young stud or whatever. That's just, you know, look at that angle. You know, that's just gonna <laughs> that's gonna hit that six point nine million X. You know, you know, Richard had mentioned it on. Uh, on I think it was that link up TV interview, but like uh -huh. you know, they're they're all just different, you know, because it's programmable money. It's you know, it's just uh -huh. algorithms and program. But but you look at Bitcoin and it's maybe you know it's maybe at this kind of slope here. You know, oh that's way better than the stock market, yada uh -huh. yada. And then you know Ethereum up here, you know that's great. You know, uh, programmable money, etc. World computer. And then you look at Hex and it's just blam, you know, uh -huh. and that's you know it's it's exciting because it really goes to show you that. Uh, you know, you can have all these naysayers, you can have all of that, but if you have results, it really refutes any negativity that other people have to say. Yeah, I know. It's so true. I mean, I'm sure Ethereum two years in was just getting flooded like left and right, you know, so yep. it, it takes a little bit of time, I think, to kind of earn your stripes and get past the point where people say it's a scam and we're just not quite there yet. But, That's you know, true. but it's, it's better from what I understand, then people who first started streaming, they talked about getting death threats and things like that. I haven't yeah, seen yeah, well, death threats yet. So. Well, and, and some Hexans did, you know, Dan Emmons. I know. Uh, he, I only say that because he's mentioned it and, you know, but, but yeah, he had gotten death threats because, you know, from the Bitcoin community and things like that. And, you know, I will say, you know, you had mentioned kind of Ethereum being similar. Oh. I didn't get in uh, ETH as early as, you know, other people. That's fine. You know, other people can say the same thing about you know myself with ether with hex and whatnot but yeah. but so the point is is that so i you know got in early 2017 to crypto oh. and then it was around when richard had started talking about hex because like oh. it, you know it obviously launched december 2nd 2019 but oh. richard i mean just like with pulse chain he'd been talking about oh. hex for like a year you know oh four more weeks four more weeks you know that's the meme you know a year later um but the point is is i was dollar cost averaging on eth you know 133 bucks 89 bucks, you know, 120, whatever. It was like, wow. it was like 90 to 133 was like, you know, what I'd averaged mm -hmm. in on. Um, but the point is, is people had said even there that it was going to go to $6 and that, you know, oh, ETH is a scam. Look, you know, it's just done this huge retracement. And what you have to be, you know, you and I talk about like, yeah. uh, um, you know, being a contrarian or yeah. not going on the right path that everyone else is going on, going on a different path. Um, you know, you you kind of have to see that that forest through the trees, or or realize, you know. And I I made like a tweet the other day, and I just zoomed out a whole bunch, and it was like hex at like six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I was like, envision the future, you know, and it's all the way up yeah. to you know twenty thirty three, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but just the point is, is you know, people they really got to expand their minds and like their thinking for for what something is capable of, because usually what their paradigm is and what their frame of thinking is is what everyone else has told them not what, yeah. you know, something can actually do. And so if you yeah. look at what, you know, traditional stuff like Amazon, Facebook, Google, you know, Alphabet have yeah. done, uh, they've done insane, you know, as Lit Gaines would say, my life is awesome, moon runners, <laughs> right? Um, and then you look at crypto and crypto's just done that on steroids. And so uh -huh. it's really cool to see. Yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, this is, this is different than, this is like on a level, I mean, six, Point nine million times <laughs> your money. I mean, a dollar can become six million dollars. I mean, that's a joke. I mean, seriously. But I mean, it could have been. And I remember when it came out, and everybody was saying like it's the biggest scam ever, and that's a joke. Like the people who bought mm. Bitcoin were being laughed at. I, I didn't understand mm. it. So I, I didn't even even I didn't even try to understand it. But now mm. I'm, I'm super late to the game. But I mean, even now, mo a majority of people around me are not into crypto 99 mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. into it at all they don't think Same. it's going to last they don't think it's going to be money for the future yeah and they don't understand it and they just think that it's just it they're like well it just doesn't how can it has no value what's the value and then just it's really hard <laughs> when somebody has that mentality so um 
but I also, um, Brandon, I watched the stream where you went through the um, front end of PulseX, and it was mm. really interesting to watch. So you did staking, right? You staked to PulseX, and then I saw you worked on the farm. So you did the liquidity, the um, so you prov liquidity providing, and then um, it was also interesting to see um, the the segment about proposals. And how like you mm, can submit mm -hmm. a proposal and even if the proposal is viewed or voted on favorably, it yeah. still might not get made, but that the proposal would be put, be taken seriously is basically what it says, mm. but it doesn't guarantee anything. What, what kind of proposals would one put in? <sighs> Honestly, I am not the right guy for that question. Okay. Okay. I, I honestly don't know, but I, I just I did think it was unique because someone had said, um, and and yeah, I think it was the Pulse X, but that it's like a hybrid between like right. you know, uh, it was either like delegated proof of stake or proof of stake, mm -hmm. and then like proof mm -hmm. of authority, and that was the mm -hmm. proof of mm -hmm. authority part, the proposal part. Um, I'm honestly not too sure to to be honest, but but okay. e you know, either way, what I can say is just fundamentally. That's awesome. You know, how many people are saying like, hey, you know, you know, a lot of people, they say one thing and then they actually do another or they mean another. Oh, and so they'll oh, say oh, like, oh. hey, we care about your opinions. And then in reality, like once the camera rolls off, they're like, we don't give oh. enough about this person's opinions. Oh, We're never oh. going to do this. And oh. so at least through, you know, once again, you know, you can listen to what someone says. That's great. That doesn't really mean squat. What do they actually do? So you see that proposal within there and it's like, okay, like, hey, you know, at least this team or this core of, you know, people and stuff like that are willing to, you know, listen. And and you see that all the time, actually, you know, <laughs> Pulse Chain came from, uh, or, you know, as far as Richard listened to the community, you know, he had listened to, because Hexologist was like, you know, Pulse Chain, you know, or, or mm -hmm. I think Pulse Swap is what it was originally yeah. for, for Pulse X, and then they, mm -hmm. they didn't have the domain. But Richard, I love this about him. And, you know, every successful person that I know or from my own success has been, you know, listening to all different opinions, different, you know, ideas, you know, whether you agree with them, whether you don't, and then kind of just like, you know, putting that in like a, a pot and then making it your own. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. you ha it's, it's like you have to absorb everything and then process it and then come up with what your plan is, you know, as opposed to being so singular minded, you know? So I think that, that, yeah, he is very good at that. He approaches everything that way, I think, you know? So I agree. Um, well, and, yeah, and no. he used to, he, he mentions this about himself. And once again, people really should, you know, people, especially for the, the OGs or whatever that have all the time on their hands and stuff, go back and listen to Richard's old, older streams. Cause I, I remember going back and you know, I'm not, I, you know, I take pride in, in not being a sports guy, not being a movie yeah. guy, not being a, you know, politic guy and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I'm a nerd for like, you know, you know, uh, a quest for, for knowledge and facts, logic mm -hmm. and wisdom and stuff. And anyways, Richard had mentioned a long time ago that, you know, I mean, he mentions he retired when he was, you know, 24 or 25, whatever mm -hmm. it was. And, uh, he had said that way back in the day, he had had like a company called like efficient systems and that, mm -hmm. you know, that was his thing was, taking something that already works or, you know, has proven, you know, it's, yeah. it's past the, uh, you know, it's, it's working, but then making it more efficient, uh, efficient, making it better. And so you see Richard yeah. doing that with, with Bitcoin. And the crazy thing about Bitcoin is that's just from a penny, 6.9 million X from a penny. It was sub penny too. And so it's like, man, you know, the gains just go exponential if you, you know, factor it even from sub penny, uh, which mm -hmm. is just, you know, it's, it's mind melting to think about, you know, you're, it's like your brain can't think, you know, about all those zeros yeah. and stuff, but it's just really the opportunity. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, you know, you have the, the greatest opportunity. Uh, everyone here has the greatest opportunity because you mentioned, because I've got a lot of people that I've onboarded, my family, friends, girlfriend, her family and all that stuff into mm -hmm. Hex. But, you know, a majority of people, yeah, they, uh, I feel like there. I feel like there's more of a tipping point in crypto than there was in 2017. Uh, in mm. 2017, it was like, oh yeah, that kid's in crypto, you know. Mm. Um, but now people are coming around to it, and you know, the opportunity, as Richard says, is not when you know Bitcoin did at 6.9 million X. It was when it was a penny. You know, it was when you know Peter Schiff had the opportunity, which was at a dollar. I know that for a fact. And so, uh, you know, some people they'll they'll be those Peter Schiffs that you know 
could have had it at a dollar, invested at a dollar, and then wrote it up to 69. And then there's those people that, you know, that, that take the opportunity and that don't. So you really have to just think for yourself and, you know, see what the community is doing too, right? What other group of people has, you know, retired multimillionaires that are showing their face that are, you know, doing streams, you know, constantly yeah. and stuff and, yeah. and that are still there. Like if that was really a rug pull, you know, they would have never showed their faces in the first place or they would have rugged when they retired, things like that. So it's cool that we're all kind of here together. Mm. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's really cool. It's such an interesting time because when Pulse Chain launches and then Pulse X, when, when you were walking through it, I actually started to really think about like yield farming. I, I mm. think that's going to be a very, very, very um, drive a lot of traffic and a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, transactions to the site because you get the second half of the pair for free so what you know what I mean like why wouldn't you I mean Richard says that and I just feel like it's going to be um really really fun to watch if that takes off the way that it's intended to you know mm. um because of that will also then affect the value of pulse because mm. the more transactions and the more activity there is on the chain the higher the value right so mm how it's it's like it says it, how the whole the game theory of how everything fits together and one feeds the other the game because the better pulse sex is the better that is for pulse chain so mm. you know it's um that was it really was very clear when i started to see it like all there and then the process of like staking pulse sex and it's the system is it's designed the site's designed really well it's really clear and it seems like it's going to be very user friendly so did it's you so find that Totally. Yeah. It, lo it looks absolutely amazing. You know, it, it's simple. And, and that's what you oh. want. You want simplicity, not complexity, uh, oh. especially if you're ever going to adopt a, a whole bunch of, you know, someone said the other day, I forget who it was, but they're like, you know, we're at 80 something thousand stakers. Imagine when we're at a million. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, that's somewhat big brain, but imagine 100 million, you know, like Richard would always talk about Clash of Clans or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't even know these, you know, these different video games that people download mm -hmm. on their apps. Mm -hmm. They have so many daily users. And it's like, mm -hmm. why can't Hex do that? It literally is, you know, an object in motion that stays in motion. It's, it's you know, literally just something that's going to, you know, the snowball going downhill. That thing, if you try and get in front of that snowball and stop it, that thing's mm -hmm. going to run you over. You know, you better yeah. hop on board the train. Otherwise, you're never going to make it on. It's just going too fast. You're going to not be able to grab onto the train. And so when you look at something like Ethereum, once again, you know, Talk is cheap. It really is cheap, right? People can talk mm -hmm. all the stuff in the world, Ethereum 2.0, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Vitalik on an interview the other day, I don't know, many months ago, but they're like, Vitalik, you know, because Ethereum 2.0 is, you know, a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. implementations. Mm -hmm. It's not just all in one. It's a whole bunch of different steps. Mm -hmm. But they're like, you know, when realistically could you see Ethereum 2.0 fully implemented? And Vitalik's like, yeah, you know, maybe six years. And and Richard's like, man, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, like mm -hmm. Richard's doing it now. He's implementing it now. And so it's just cool to see because, you know, what you're going to have, and Richard talks about this, is a vampire attack. You know, you're, 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 and, and it's, it's in the most honest way, in the most uh, trustful way of just meritocracy, building a better product. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like mm -hmm. what happened with Bitcoin to Ethereum. Richard was mm -hmm. a uh, Bitcoin maxi for the longest time. And then he realized, hey, you know, these guys did cuckold my gains and they kind of, you know, I, I was talking crap about this. And in reality, I should have been learning, you know. Yeah. And so you see that with people with with Pulse Chain or some of these other things. And, you know, it's cool because Richard says, hey, you don't like Hex. Well, guess what? You're going to love Pulse Chain because yeah. Pulse Chain has nothing to do with Hex. Exactly. It's just exactly. a smart contract. <laughs> it is. It's, it's so, true. so cool. I, I'm trying to onboard like my whole run of content are going to be short videos on why crypto, the problem with inflation, and just bite sized pieces about like comparing Pulse to BNB, comparing Pulse to Solana, comparing, um, you know, pancake swap to Pulse Dex, just so that p give people a point of reference to something that's already out there and that's doing, that's done really well and say, well, this is the new version of that and it's better. So if that did well, this will probably do better. So that's, cause that's how people think. And if they see that and they have a point of reference of something that's already out there, then that'll be, you know, I think a good way to try to convince people to come on board because Pulse is really easy to understand. It's a fork of Ethereum. It's cheaper and faster. And, and it's proof of stake, not proof of work. I mean, so simple. So, and then, you know, and the success of Hex does help to say, well, yeah, the guy who did it, his last, 
you know, um, token 10,000 X from all time low to all time high, you know, and people just like, Oh, really? Yeah. So, and the community and all that. So I feel like, um, for onboarding, I'm really, really focusing on pulse because that's a good way. And mm. also can, you can be day one. People want to be day one and they can be day one. They didn't sacrifice, that's but they so can true. still be day one. So, cause I might feel well, like yeah. it's too late for hex. It's not, but yeah. Well, well and, it, and it's true, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at Bitcoin's price today. I just on Nomics and, you know, it's just saying 44,465.20. Yeah. But the point is, yeah, you know, no one wants to buy, uh, it, it is too late for Bitcoin. You know, those people that had the opportunity had that 6.9 million X already. Like the opportunity is not in Bitcoin, not necessarily is it in Ethereum. Same thing, you know, the, the people that had gotten in, you know, the seven years prior or whatever had already have all the opportunity. And you're right. Um, how cool is it for, for like unit bias and stuff for people instead of being like, oh, I could own, you know, point, you know, three, you know, point three two Bitcoin or X amount of Ethereum, but but I'm going to have millions of pulse or, or this or that. And so yeah. you're totally right that it is the, uh, you know, it's the ground floor and it, and it really is, you know, from like a house or, I mean, even this, you know, a commercial like high rise, you know, you want that ground floor to be strong because then you can build, you know, 30 plus floors on top um, exactly. or 30 stories. I mean, yeah. you know, so it really is that infrastructure and that's what people want. You know, uh, like you mentioned, the, the cool thing is, is not only, you know, like you mentioned, the difference between, uh, you know, Binance Smart Chain and Pulse yeah. Chain. I tell you what, Binance Smart Chain didn't include the full system state itself. So exactly. you already have that system state and it's exactly. like, wait, there's there's everything to gain and to benefit and literally nothing to lose. You know, that's, that's freaking win-win right there. And so it's going to be win-win for Pulse Chain because we're going to get users, they're going to get cheaper fees. And then as that happens, the the token, you know, the coin itself or whatever it is, uh, token or coin oh, is it's deflationary. A coin. If it's a native, a it's coin. coin. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Um, <laughs> but it's just going to go up in value. You know, all you got to totally. do is hold. I mean, it's deflationary. You know, um, with Binance, that they only have 21 validators. We have 33. I mean, that's crazy. You know, they're like active <laughs> and they have how many users? And they have 21. Like Richard just does everything better. Um, okay. So I have a fun fact. So if you had invested $100 two years ago, two years ago, today, if you'd invested in Apple today, you'd have $288, which is, you know, mm. what, triple, whatever, right? Bitcoin, you'd have $600 and, $676. And um, if you had invested in Ethereum, you'd have $2,188. If you had invested $100 in Hex, you would have $27,500. Isn't that crazy? That's I mean, amazing. our price is really low right now too, but that's like yeah. two years ago. And I'm not talking at all time high, all time low. It's just, mm. I just randomly picked like exactly two years mm. ago, just to illustrate where you should put your money right now, you know? So I'm preparing well, for another video. Well, th no, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's such mm. a good uh, perspective, right? Because people see, you know, uh, you know, people in the old and traditional market, they can crap talk crypto all they want until they have a similar thing with Richard had with Ethereum to Bitcoin. They realize, oh, oh you know, my stock did like, you know, 12% this year. These kids did 10,000 X. Like, uh, yeah. I want to be at the cool kid club, not, you know, the yeah. old boomers and stuff. Yeah. And so anyways, those numbers that you mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned the Bitcoin, the yeah. Ethereum and stuff. The cool thing about Hex is like you have possession of, you know, it's decentralized finance. Nowhere else do you have this in the freaking world where it's immutable, it's like autonomous, the, the smart contract has been going 100% of time, never had exactly. up down, or sorry, never had a downtime. Uh -huh. But so so the point that I was going to say is, you know, you mentioned that was, uh, I think you said two years ago. Imagine yeah. if you had staked for those freaking two years, because I promise you, <laughs> you would have had big payday. You know, you would have had yeah. all this other stuff. Those Those shares themselves, the way that the hex itself works is just so unique and you know, it's, uh, you know, people say, uh, Richard had mentioned, like, this really is, uh, what is it like, uh, Nobel Prize, that's what it was. He like, he yeah. deserves a Nobel Prize for this kind of invention, um, because it, you know, mimics the compounding interest with the way that the shares and the, the staking mm -hmm. works. And, you know, as far as the yield goes, yeah, it pays to be in earlier. So if someone has that opportunity or they're down on their initial investment, whatever, et cetera, if you if you even just if you go to like stakehex.today uh, or you go to 
uh, what is it? Hexcalc, uh, hexcalc.net, I think. You know, you can see some of these different annual percentage yields and some of these, you know, uh, potential return on investments you could get with no price appreciation, you know? Uh And so you can, you can, you can go back to, uh, from from being in the reds, being in the black, or you know, making back your initial you know quote unquote loss and stuff on paper, to to all of a sudden making a whole bunch more gains than if you were just holding it you know liquid per se. Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's no question about the fact that it's a huge lost opportunity not to stake hex, huge. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's a brilliant invention. It really is. I just think that most people don't understand it. Mm. You well, know, you said least, it with whales. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and well, you said it with whales. You're like, you know, uh, you know, hey, uh, I think at the time you had said like yeah. uh, hex was twelve cents, and you're like, yeah. but we're getting a copy. Like so many people, you know, there's uh-huh. there's there's so much good and there's so much abundance. They forget uh-huh. about like all these different things, you know, uh-huh. all these different branches of a tree. Uh-huh. But it's like, oh yeah, you know. So if you are getting copy and it's twelve cents, well then, you know, obviously right now it's like fourteen point nine. But, you know, roughly you're getting, you know, each hex for seven and a half, you know, because you're getting the two for the price of one. And uh, how cool is that? So now you're going to have, you know, two price charts uh, with with just hex alone. And so I'm really excited to see that because the smart contract itself is just the same, but it's that substrate, that underlying network, that foundation of that house or that high rise that with, with pulse chain, that it's a damn fortress. It's, a, you know, you can build a castle Whereas it's like that analogy with like the the wolf, you know, the pigs and the wolf uh-huh. and one of them's got a straw and the other one's got a house of like, you know, stone or something. You know, he- uh, Pulse Chain is that house of stone and in Ethereum right now, especially with these damn gas fees and stuff like that and the S-load function messing with, you know, us, uh, that's kind of like the house of straws or uh-huh. the house of glass, you could say. Just throw a rock and it'll shatter. The Pulse on Ethereum versus, I mean, the hex on Ethereum versus hex on Pulse Chain. It's going to be like an epic drama <laughs> to see what happens. It's going to be, I think, really, really dramatic. Mm. But cool. Well, but I think. Well, the, you know, wait, like. Wait. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, like, you know, hey, some people just have like 150, 25, you know, uh, you know, uh, a handful of change, you know, a couple shekels here and there to invest in something like that. Pulse is going to be perfect for them. And and it doesn't mean that Hex on Ethereum is going to be any less uh, different. It's just going to mean that, hey, you know, it's kind of like, hey, those that can afford those Ethereum fees, because it's still profitable for, you know, some people with certain economic uh, levels and stuff. And it's still going to be profitable for them. And, and so you're going to see like, yeah, if you see, you know, you might see like a higher, uh, you know, APY on one and a lower on the other and maybe mm-hmm. some different price, things like that. But I really think that, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's the same smart contract. It's just a different network. And so mm-hmm. you're right. It is. I mean, it's never been done before. So really, at the end of the day, we're all kind of just, you know, you know, blind, mm-hmm. blind with a dart, you know, dartboard, just speculating. But it's going to be fun to see. Yeah. Really, really fun. I can't wait. I, when do you, what, what's your prediction on the launch? Do you have one? <clears throat> I hate that um, question. I hate people <clears throat> asking. I ask everybody who comes on. <laughs> I'm so well, rude. you know, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, you know, just like with Richard, uh, all of his predictions have been wrong, you know, as far as that goes. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, pretty much his. It's, you know, it's, so it'll, obviously it'll be ready when it's ready. Um, as far as that goes, here's what I will say. So, because I, I, you know, back in the day with Feeder, it was me, Steve, I think Steve hits oh. in and, and someone else, but you know, I was thinking, oh, you know, by by the end of the year for sure, and then you know, by three fifteen, we'll see it and stuff like this. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so to answer your question, so Richard had mentioned that, hey, you know, you're gonna see that we're closer to to the snapshot of the hard fork or whatever people want to call yeah. it. It's really both, but you know, you're gonna see us being closer to Pulse Chain when you see, you know, uh, Pulse Chain working with the go.hex.com front end and all these different things that are like a list that you're just checking off the list. And uh-huh. so it seems that many, you know, many boxes of that checklist have been checked off and stuff. And so I feel like, I feel like, you know, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it could it could be, you know, another couple months or whatever, but I think, uh, I think we're really close. I mean, I, you know, as far as like a guess goes, I mean, <laughs> Here's what I will say, uh, just as like uh, conservative. So PulseCon itself, I think, is like September, 
six to the ninth and it's like uh-huh. a you know big big you know pulse chain so i would say by then <laughs> you know at the very at the very latest okay you know? that's but, good but it, that's good yeah. i accept that answer um are you going yeah pulse yeah time? i'm going yeah yeah okay, so so the the thing is is um you know i've i've been yeah you know to you know the major ones like the the first one that maddie did the second one that he did and you know now t money again and uh and barry and stuff but uh you know so i've got all my brothers into hacks and you know old co-workers and stuff like that staked you know quattro cinco's for their kids and stuff like oh, that wow. um okay. because it's cool you know it's the next generation like you know i feel like yeah. it's kind of like you know it's important and like paying it forward and leading by example like if you really believe in this well shit, you know, this kid just got $1,500 worth of, you know, a steak for Quattro Cinco. That kid's yeah. going to be a future multi, you know. So anyways, the point is, is that uh, my brothers have never met the Hexicans face to face. And oh, so wow. I want them to meet the Hex family. And, you know, I think it'll just be a great time and great experience. Oh, it'll be fun. The two year anniversary was so fun. I mean, it was so fun. It was a whole week of just like dinners and meeting people. And then they, they would introduce you to people and then they would introduce you. It, it was awesome. It's really cool. Well, it's all grassroots too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. It's really nice. So it'll be fun. I'm really looking forward. I got my ticket today, my plane ticket, because that's really tricky because coming from mm. here right now, there's a lot of people mm-hmm. traveling back and forth. But so I got that. So I'm definitely going to be going. But um, awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to stream again tomorrow <laughs> on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Going to have you on my channel. That'll be, that'll be awesome. I really look forward to it. And, and once again, yeah, thank you for, you know, having me on your channel. It's, uh, it's really cool. And I, I heard you say like, you know, yeah, it's, it's awesome to see like the, uh, the ladies of Hex last night, you know, a yeah. whole group of, of, you know, 10 ladies. And there's probably yeah. more that maybe wanted to come on and whatever, but you know, couldn't cause the max on stream yards 10, um, so anyways, it's just really cool to see, you know, like I mentioned, it really is a grassroots, uh, you know, adoption movement, you know, community product and all that. And, uh, you know, the opportunity, you know, the, you know, the best time to get in is now, you know, it's the absolute best time to get in or actually the best time to get in was yesterday. But, you know, since we can't rewind time, it, it is now, you know. Um, and so anyways, it's, uh, it's cool to see and, you know, the relationships that I've made and friends that I've made all around the world and stuff like that. Uh, have just been absolutely really cool to see. It was cool that all the women, and then you know there was so the chat was like crazy. It was on fire. It was so <laughs> fast, so much chat happening. And then like Rackham gave five hundred dollars. So I took yeah. a screenshot. Yeah. I took a screenshot of all the women together because I always talk to Richard about how we need more women, and he he wants to have more women in the community. So I took a screenshot of the whole. Um, <laughs> group and he was really happy <laughs> yeah so it was good i mean that's a lot of women you know like in yeah. one chat it was like a yeah. more than friday night hangout have you know even 10 yeah. people and they're all totally female. right yeah so mm. it's cool well and, and then the very last thing i'll say because i know we're wrapping up you know i'll have you on tomorrow mm. at 2 p.m pacific standard time but but you know similar to what you'd mentioned so uh which is all digital that's awesome um in different time zones and stuff that's awesome all around the world but, you know, um, even with, you know, the thing that Maddie had hosted just recently, uh, you know, the the second year of the physical conference, you know, there's a whole bunch of women in person as well that are, uh, you know, there had to be at least, I don't even know, I mean, like 30 to 50 women in that photo. Um, and it's all, you know, hexagon ladies in person and stuff. So you're right. It, it's cool to see, um, you know, like Serena was probably one of the, I, mean, I know for a fact, she was one of the very first ones. And then now you you know, as, as more people kind of get into it and more people feel comfortable, then they feel comfortable getting in and then telling their friends and them getting in. So it really is organic. And, you know, we haven't hit our hockey stick moment yet. We're so, so, so early, you know, we're still, you know, yeah, you look at the 10,000 X that we've done compared to, you know, 10,000 all the way down here, you know, 6.9 million X is, you know, it's not even in the frame. And, uh, you know, we got, we, we've got all of this, you know, all of this opportunity and it's just all opportunity. So it's really exciting. And, you know, not everyone is going to be here, uh, to, you know, to make all the gains or, you know, certain people get off the train at a different stop, you know, the bus at a different stop, but along the way it's, you know, it's really the journey that's super fun. And, you know, the, the very last thing I'll say is it's cool. You know, it's, it's literal when I was, uh, you know, into the the real estate and the precious metals and stuff. It was always mm-hmm. passive income, passive income. How do you do passive income? Business for mm-hmm. passive income. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, Richard did it. And like, you know, for me, I think it's at four or five p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But 
you know, the, the day ticks over the next day, hundred percent uptime. And, you know, based on your, you know, shares, you get, you know, some of the passive income. It's a beautiful mm. system. It's a great system. Red squirrel says hi. Um, okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap up here. Um, cool. I hope everyone enjoys their Saturday. It's nighttime for me. I think you guys are still in the day. So you still have, I think, a lot of sun. And it was really beautiful here today, too, which is nice. So, okay. Well, I'll see you all soon. Thank you, Brandon, for joining. That was really, that was really fun. We'll Thanks continue tomorrow, part two. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Bye.